In this guide I'm going to explain how to run a linear model analysis, specifically a regression, in JASP and I'm going to use the traditional method and the Bayesian method. I start by opening the same data set that we've been using with academic achievement and study hours. So I just show the data, press the arrow there, so that's the data in which we've been working with and um, let's go to the analysis. Um, first let's do a graph again, so we go to descriptives and we put um, study hours, so the variable that we want to put in the x-axis of the graph goes first and uh, the second, the variable in the y-axis goes second. And so we've got this statistic, so the mean for study hours is 22.8, the mean for academic achievement 50.609, etc. Uh, we went through that already. So you go to plots, and now we've gone, we want a scat plot. And let's uh, at the moment get rid of this uh, density, uh, we'll put none, and uh, density none, and in add regression line, uh, I'm going to untick and then I'm going to tick it again. So here we've got the plot, so we've got study hours in the x-axis, so remember when, we, when you put the variables there, the variable that you put first goes in the x-axis, the variable second goes in the y-axis, so uh, it's showing the relationship between these two variables and now we add regression line uh, just the, the fault is to do a smooth line but we are doing a linear model so we want a linear um, um, model so we've got a line and uh, we can have it without a confidence interval or with the confidence interval that uh, the um, the estimation so now uh, it's becoming um, a bit fashionable to to add the dis distributions of the individual variables in the same graph so we've got the distribution for academic achievement um, will appear here so that would be the graph right of cutter plot and we can and we want a density so that's the distribution that's sort of normal distribution with a very quite widespread and we can do histogram if we want that so this is more descriptive um, and uh, of is exactly the, the 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 histogram of the sample uh, but the density is uh, sort of a um, a our belief about the how the population uh, the distribution in the population. So in order to have this similar with study hours, we use graph above scatter plot, and we can have the density of the histogram. So we can ha here we have a what we call a bimodal distribution by model. It's not binomial, so don't get confused. The binomial distribution is uh, a different thing. Bimodal means that it has two modes, and modes means the most uh, the most probable values in a distribution. So here, instead of having one most probable value, we have two. Okay, so uh, or we can have the histogram. As I showed you before, and it shows that there is some, uh, a peak over there and a peak over there. So we want to keep the same. Whatever we put here, we put there as well. So this is a it's a more, more uh, a cooler graph than the just the the scatter plot with the regression line. Okay, let's go to the model comparison. So we go go to regression. And we start with classical. Um, so the dependent variable is academic achievement, 
and we've got a covariate which is study hours okay so then we have so here we have the coefficients um, and this one is the model of the just uh, the the model with one coefficient the beta zero only and this is the model with the two coefficients beta zero and beta one so here when we've got the unstandardized and um, standard error and standardized these are the betas that i mentioned in the theoretical module so here uh, 35.816 is the intercept the beta zero in this model and standard error is the the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the uh, beta zero and likewise these study hours uh, this unstandardized is the beta one that i mentioned and it's 0 0.648 with the standard error which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of of of, of b1 and 0 0.035 now standardized are the um is the the same as beta one but is calculated instead of using raw scores the variables the two variables are converted into z scores uh, so uh, we've got um, standardized values and then the um, uh, the the b1 is calculated with those scores and so that value is 0 0.731 I repeat what what that what this means it here 0 0.648 means that for one unit of increase in study hours we expect 0 0.648 points of increase in academic achievement the standardized would be for one standard deviation increase in study hours we expect a 0 0.731 standard deviations increase in academic achievement but this is the part that that we are interested in when we uh, are testing whether the alternative hypothesis is supported or not um, remember that i mentioned that uh, typically it's used the t uh, the t score to make the the decision whether the, the result is significant or not so in for for beta one uh, the t score is 18.5 and um and the distribution uh, the degrees of freedom in that in this t distribution is 298 which is 300 which is the the n of the sample the number of uh, participants minus two so in a t distribution with um, uh, degrees of freedom 298 this value 18.514 is very unlikely it's very very small the probability here we've got that is less than 0 0.001 but i would suggest that there are more and more zeros to come um, so that is telling us that including the study hours is it gives us uh, a significant result so study hours is a good predictor of academic achievement with beta zero um, it's less important because well first why we don't have standardized score well because it's zero when we convert the two variables to set scores the mean of the of the both of both variables is zero and that is the intercept so that 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 um, by by definition will be the intercept so we know it's zero and so this is the t score and the this t score here is is um comparing this value 35.8 with zero so basically this is uh, indicating how far from zero it is and a t score of 42.9 is it's um, highly uh, um, probable in a in a population in which the the beta zero would be zero so it is rejected the idea so but it's not uh, typically very in, important 
in the uh, in a regression or linear model to determine whether the the um, the intercept is different than zero the beta one the the slope of the of the linear model is much more important we can add something in uh, if go to statistics we can add the confidence interval and uh, this should appear here okay so now we've got the um, the upper bound and the lower bound of the 95 percent confidence intervals for the two parameters next step is to do the Bayesian regression so we go to Bayesian linear regression and we use the same variables academic achievement and study hours now here we've got base factor one zero um, so remember this will be the base factor that will compare the now sorry the alternative hypothesis to the null hypothesis so if it is uh, higher than one that would be in favor of the alternative hypothesis if it is lower than one it will be in favor of the null hypothesis now before we look at this there is something very important we need to compare to null model not compared to the best model so tick there okay and then here we only look at base factor one zero so for the model with study hours the base factor is 6.606 e to the 47 so this is like um a number uh, 6.6 .6 followed by 40 no sorry 6 6 followed by 47 zeros so it's a huge huge number so the base factor here is um, indicates that the the alternative hypothesis is way much more likely than the null hypothesis and that is the end of the Bayesian uh, linear regression in some occasions you, you if this value is less than um, less than one you will you want to do the base factor zero one so you tick there you can also do one divided by this and you obtain that value but you get it here so that you get a very small value so it's to the minus 48 so that means that they are like uh, a number with um, 0 0.000 and 48 zeros and then comes uh, so 48 decimals when you when you have the e minus um, so that's all you need to know about the, the how to do base yeah, the base factor in JASP very simple way of comparing um, two models the model of the null hypothesis and the model of the alternative hypothesis